I just bought an Azus EPC off of eBay for $10, plus postage. Was it worth the money? And is this thing still usable in 2021? Well, let's find out. At the very least, it was shipped in a box. There have been quite a few laptops I've bought where they've literally just wrapped it in a bag and sent it to me. Opening it up, we can see they put the laptop in a protective pouch that you'd probably find in a space shuttle. And inside that, it's good to see that it did include the original charger. And inside a bag from Baker's Delight of all places, we've got the $10 EPC netbook. Back when this was released in 2010, it was praised for including a discrete NVIDIA Ion GPU. But this was sadly paired with a pretty weak Intel Atom N450 single core processor. It looks as if this particular EPC was used quite extensively. There's quite a lot of gunk around the edges and keys, and I can't wait to open it up. Reviews also noted that it struggled just running the included Windows 7 some of the time, and I'll try my best to clean it up. But there's also a lot of cosmetic wear that cleaning won't change though. Turning it on, it loads right into Windows 7. The previous owner didn't wipe off their old files here, which included Seasons of the Simpsons, Black Adder, Red Dwarf, Black Books, and 8GB worth of music. Before we take things further, here's a short word from today's sponsor. Today's video was made possible thanks to the Feiyu 2 Pocket Gimbal. If you want a super small, really well-built pocket-sized camera and gimbal, Feiyu Tech has you covered. Featuring an ultra-wide 130-degree lens and the ability to shoot up to 4K at 60 frames per second, it's a really useful device for filming on the go. The three-axis brushless gimbal ensures that your shots are smooth and stable. It's easy to use and you can even control it from your smartphone. Check out the links in the description if you want it at a cheaper price. And thanks to Feiyu Tech for sending this over. Now I think it's time we should give it a clean with a healthy dose of eucalyptus oil. As I always say, be sure to clean off any secondhand electronics you buy as there's no way of knowing who or what's been touching them. To keep this as original as possible, I made an effort to clean around the stickers on the palm rest, but because these are on the palm rest, there is a lot of gunk built up from the owner's hands. Yeah, kind of gross, right? Honestly, I don't think the screen has ever been cleaned either. It probably wasn't worth them going to the effort considering they put the buy now price at this laptop at only $10 in the first place. The battery in here doesn't actually work. I could have got a replacement that that means spending nearly five times what I paid for the laptop itself. And considering how useful this device will likely be even after a restoration, I don't think it makes financial sense to do that. And underneath the RAM cover we can see the 2GB of DDR2 666MHz RAM. And there's only one slot. Yeah, this is actually the maximum amount of RAM that this processor can handle. So no, I can't add more RAM, even if I had a second slot. To get access to the internals, the keyboard must be removed and it's held in place by four plastic clips. And be sure to release the tabs on this connector as you don't want to damage this. Then there are about 10 screws holding the rest of the top casing on. And to take things apart further, we'll have to void the warranty, which is definitely still valid. And I can simply run a plastic spudger around the edges to release the clips. And now we finally get a good look at all the internal components. The first thing that really caught my eye was the build up of excess skin near the edge. Yeah, once again, that's pretty gross. And to begin removing the motherboard, I must unplug the original 320GB WD Blue hard drive. The single fan looks like it's accumulated its fair share of dust. And with it out of the way, the board can be carefully lifted out of the casing. And surprisingly, the cooling fins aren't actually all that clogged with dust, which is kind of disappointing. It's been a while since I've seen a literal carpet clogging the air exhaust. Either way, I cleaned out the casing, which wasn't too dusty inside. The fan is where most of the dusty action is. And with a quick brushing, the blades are looking as good as new. Holding the heat pipe in place are four small Phillips head screws. This single pipe provides cooling to both the CPU and the discrete NVIDIA graphics processor. The old thermal paste had unsurprisingly hardened over the last 11 years. And to get the surface as clean as possible, I used some 100% isopropyl alcohol. It's a pretty simple board, and I always like seeing how the different manufacturers lay them out. Now the new thermal paste can be applied. And to potentially make the system run a bit faster, I took the brackets off the original drive and put in an inexpensive solid state drive. Even though you've got to go through quite a few steps just to remove the hard drive, it's pretty easy to take apart. I went ahead and installed Windows 7 as a test and it did indeed work, but I wanted to run something a little more modern and a bit more secure, so I installed a flavor of Linux. So now that it's clean, let's try using this cheap $10 laptop from eBay. Linux gives you access to a heap of free games and applications. The first one I'm running is Super Tux Kart, a Mario Kart clone, yes, but it is a lot of fun and works very well on this laptop. There are even some first-person arena shooters in the app repository. The graphics look pretty good, and it runs very smoothly, even on this weak hardware. 
While I simply couldn't get any version of Minecraft to work, there is a Minecraft clone on Linux called Mindtest. I couldn't seem to get it to run very well, but hey, why not join my Minecraft server that's on screen now? If you wanted to use a laptop like this for typing up documents, it's actually got a very usable keyboard, even though the laptop itself is quite small. Although the raised bumps on the trackpad surface are somewhat off-putting, I'd recommend using an external mouse. While basic web browsing is totally doable, if not a little slow, YouTube playback at 720p or higher is basically just a slideshow. There are definitely better versions of Linux for an Atom-powered netbook, but it run alright, all things considered. In Azusa's words, this netbook enables you to go anywhere in style, as long as you bring the charger, or pay for a new battery. So there we have it, an old EPC computer. This came from a time when there was high demand and least interest in low-powered, really tiny laptops. Uh, those days have pretty much since ended, but anyway, this is a cool footnote into the history of small, low-powered computing. Anyway, I'm glad to have another one in my collection, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, have a good one.